We've had a look at how diseases can be transmitted from one person to another, but now we're going to look at how these actually spread to the wider population. So our learning intention for today is to describe the interrelated factors that can determine the spread of infectious disease. So having a look here, um, we can classify the spread of disease out of these um, five different categories here. So the first one is sporadic. So the disease occurs infrequently at irregular intervals. So a good example of this is the mad cow disease that I mentioned in one of the previous videos. Another one is endemic. So the disease is always present in the population, but only within a certain geographical location. And a good example of this is malaria along or around the tropical regions. And that is due to all of the mosquitoes that are present there. An outbreak, so this is something that's just kind of a sudden occurrence of a disease, um, but of course this is confined to a small number of individuals and to a particular geographic location. So again, the Ebola outbreak that happened in Liberia um, in 2014, that was in the news for quite a bit when that occurred. And then an epidemic. So this one is an outbreak of an infectious disease that occurs suddenly and unexpectedly to a population um, that is a bit larger than what was initially expected. So um, this, or well, there was the SARS virus that came out in 2003 um, that is belonging to the same family as the COVID-19 virus. And then, of course, and we have all lived this ourselves, a pandemic is a new infectious disease that spreads worldwide. So, of course, the example that I have here is COVID-19. So, when we are looking at our um, spread of disease, this can be increased or the chances of the disease being spread can be increased by the severity of the pathogen. So severity meaning about how um, viral it is or its virulence. So how easily it is to be able to spread from one person or another. And this can occur to a sudden genetic change um, within their makeup that makes it so that it is more transmissible between different people. Um, the next one is the transmission of pathogen to new population of humans. Right. So thinking about when um, Captain Cook and the British um, colonies did come and invade Australia, um, they brought about with them new pathogens that had never before been seen by the indigenous population. So these diseases spread rampantly through the indigenous population and ended up killing many of them. And that was due to them never having been exposed before, which of course meant that they did not have a very high immunity against it in comparison to the British um, people that came in. Another one is the transmission of pathogen um, that is in an animal to humans. So again, not previously occurred before. So um, if we think about the flu virus, the flu virus, um, we can often catch this from um, birds. So that's called the avian um, flu virus. So avian meaning birds. Um, so often if we do catch it from um, a animal to a human, um, then of course we are a bit more susceptible in that case there. And then finally, just having a low immunity or natural defence to the pathogen um, can increase the spread. So again, if you have never had um, the flu before, then you are more susceptible to getting it as your body's immune system is not familiar with how to fight it. So we can kind of think about in terms of our COVID-19 example, um, there was an increased severity of the pathogen. So we had this new um, kind of genus of the coronavirus come out and start wreaking havoc everywhere. And we had quite a few genetic changes of it throughout um, its time in um, the global context. It was a transmission of a pathogen to a new population. So, of course, it was easily able to travel around due to the fact that we can hop in an airplane and travel around. So lots of people um, were able to spread this virus quite quickly. Um, it initially was um, contracted from a bat, um, I believe, in a Chinese market is what is 
um, predicted it as to what has happened. And of course, because no one before had had coronavirus before, we had a low defense or natural immunity to this. So that did mean that it was the perfect combination of all four of these that meant that coronavirus had become a pandemic as it did spread globally. Um, another virus or sorry, bacteria pathogen um, that we can have a look at and that I find interesting is um, the spread of the Yersinia pestis. So that is a bacteria that causes the back death and it wiped out millions of people. Okay. So there were high morality rates and this was due to poor sanitation. So think about now when we were trying to limit the spread of coronavirus, we were washing our hands, we were washing surfaces, everything, you name it, we were cleaning everything because that is honestly one of the best prevention methods for pathogens because it does kill them um, by, you know, using antiseptic techniques. So, of course, back then when the Black Death was around between 1347 and 1390, that wasn't actually a really big thing at all, being hygienic and things like that. And you had really low working class people who were living in the slums and were just around filth in general. Um, because of that, we know that the Yersinia pestis was spread through rats who were infected by fleas that had the Yersinia pestis um, bacteria. So because rats and fleas were very prevalent around that time because of that poor sanitation, it did mean it spread to lots of people. So um, the bike death, though, it wasn't a pandemic. It was more of an epidemic um, just due to the fact that it was around the European population that did catch this. It was not worldwide. So you might have seen before like many different depictions of like the Grim Reaper with the little mask and then that really long kind of um, nose that it had there and that often depicted um, the time of the Black Death or the bubonic plague. But surprisingly enough we've actually had many um, pandemics throughout history. So of course in this case here um, whole country so Europe yes it was a I'd say an epidemic or sometimes you might consider it a pandemic if you're thinking whole country. So that was prevalent in Europe. Um, so this one here is the biggest <laughs> killer that we've had in terms of bacteria of all time. So that's 200 million. And you can see over here the death toll of it was the biggest out of all of them. Um, keep in mind, I'm pretty sure the bubonic plague has killed more than any world war that we've had combined. OK, so thinking about how much money and resources that lots of countries spent on military when really they should be spending it more on health and research um, into the medical field of science. And that was actually a really big criticism of many scientists when COVID-19 did, in fact, become a pandemic. A lot of scientists were blaming the governments for spending all their money on military resources rather than um, trying to advance their science and medicine fields and practices like that. But anyway, as you can see that um, the very first one, 5 million death toll, this happened, you know, a uh, long time ago and we're coming in through the ages all the way up until now where we start looking at things like SARS, Ebola, our swine flu and COVID-19 is here. Um, at the time that this was made, this was in 2022. So this is currently ongoing um, and its death toll stands at 6.6 .6 million. So it's definitely not as big as um, some of our other ones. So HIV and AIDS is in fact a big one um, that is still present and prevalent and we do not have a current cure or vaccine for. But luckily with COVID-19, we do have a vaccine for it. So hopefully this death toll here does not get that much bigger, uh, but it is quite comparable to um, quite a few other flus and viruses and things that we have had that have killed many people beforehand, but definitely not to the extent as these big four up here. So there are different factors that can influence the spread of disease, not only for the pathogen itself, but also in terms of transition mechanisms. So um, of course, if it's an airborne, waterborne, if it's spread by rodents, droplet infection. So this is just, you know, the direct transmission and disease transmission stuff we looked at in the last video. 
the mobility of the population. So cheaper international travel enables the spread of disease. And we, in fact, saw that with COVID-19. The use and misuse and abuse of um, intravenous drugs. So again, thinking about HIV and AIDS, that is very much so one that gets spread about due to this. Poor sanitation. So again, the Black Death was definitely exacerbated by the poor sanitation back then. But even thinking about now in third world countries where they might not have a lot of clean water or there might not just be anything um, as elaborate as our sewage system here, and it might not even exist in some third world countries, um, that does mean they are more prone to drinking contaminated water um, that is holding pathogens and things like that. And then as we said beforehand, the cleanliness of things does in fact reduce pathogens um, in the environment. And then lastly, our spread from animals to animals is um, also a way that we can influence um, the spread of disease. So I know cats themselves actually do hold a lot of or can hold a lot of pathogens. They do hold one particular nasty parasite that isn't pleasant at all. Um, I can't remember the name of it now, but if you ask me in class time, I might be able to track down the name and let you know.